Good morning. Welcome to a morning edition of Mornings with Stanley and Lucy's here too. And they both got smiles on their faces, looks of anticipation, thinking, are we going to go for a walk? And I'm thinking, later, after I get home from work this afternoon. I got up early this morning. I could have taken them, but I'm lazy. <laughs> so, anyway, I did. I had other stuff to do. I mean, I mentioned yesterday that the exterminator's coming tomorrow, so I have to kind of clean up the house. And Lucy, bless her heart, she is, you know, she's just a carpet. <laughs> she goes out and lays in the grass, or there's really not a lot of grass in the backyard or some, but mostly it's dead leaves, and then she just tracks them all in. And so I just saw my floor. It's like, I keep sweeping it up. <laughs> There's dead leaves everywhere. Oh, well, I need to get her shaved. Time for her spring shave down. I think she'll feel a lot better. I like her. With, I like the way she looks when she's got less hair. And Stanley's wondering why I'm not talking about him. Stanley's a mess. He's an indoor dog, though. He is just... He is just so in, he just doesn't spend a lot of time laying outside. He's the first of my dogs that's really been an indoor dog. Um, Opie and, Opie likes spending that time outside. I don't have a dog door. But lots of times he just go outside while I'm at the home. Stanley wants to be where I am. And I don't know what he does when I'm not here, but I'm thinking he probably spends most of his time being depressed because I'm not here, <laughs> or maybe not. I know he doesn't chew on things. He, he hasn't destroyed anything since in a long time, thank goodness, especially since I got this new furniture. I just got an ad from Costco where I got my new furniture, and um, my furniture is being going on sale next week for $900 less. <laughs> Story of my life. <sighs> Move. Oh well, so it goes. I'm trying to think of anything else. I just had a nice day off yesterday. My allergies are back in force. I did take an allergy medication. I made the mistake. I, I use this. I bought one of the things, you know, last year when we were all on lockdown and surfed the internet way too much and all these ads would pop up. Well, this ad for a single blade razor came on and and I, I fell for it and ordered it, and um, and it's really a nice razor. I use it, and um, and I like their shaving cream. It's they use a shaving brush, and it's this little jar of cream, and it's, it does a great job. Um, they also have the spray stuff that after you shave, you spray it, and then there's a, a, a after shave balm, and also a pre a pre shave face wash, which I haven't always used all that stuff. But today I had some bloody spots. I thought I'd spray that spray on there because it helps stop the bleeding. Though time will do the same thing or toilet paper. <laughs> but, um, and, then I, and I don't know, I'm allergic to something. And because <laughs> my nose is like long, set my nose on fire. But I like, I, I do like, I like the smell of it. That's the worst part about it. It really does smell good. But I've never been able to wear colognes. My mom was very allergic to perfume, and I kind of inherited a lot of that from from her. Though, though she she was allergic to the smell of everything, even flowers. And maybe I am to a certain extent. Maybe that's why yesterday, um, Friday, Sunday night, I talked about how my allergies just would not stop. And I thought it was just because I was really tired. When I'm tired, my nose starts to run, but. Um, but also, we had the lilies on Easter Sunday, and Easter they were brought in on Saturday. So, and so when I went in there to get ready for Sunday, <coughs> excuse me, they were already there. And um, so I, and then um, the friend of mine who I went over for lunch had lilies there too, and they smelled. So I was, I was really close to lilies all day long on Sunday. And I don't know if that had anything to do with it because it's not like my nose just started running whenever I was with the lilies. But my mom could not. She said she didn't, she never came to Easter Sunday for um, last, I don't know. They, I know since when they moved back to Texas in 1986 from Norway, probably until the day she died. She never went to church on Easter Sunday because of the, the lilies. So my aunt, 
Nita, uh, my Uncle Norm's wife, who actually yesterday was, the, I guess, the sixth anniversary of his death. Um, Norm was my mom's older brother. Um, but Nita wouldn't go on Easter Sunday because she thought it was a fashion show. <laughs> And then my brother, when I talked to him on Sunday night, he was, they went to a church in, in Tyler where my, where my um, sister-in-law's mother goes to church. And, um, and they went to the Easter, Saturday Easter service there. And um, he said that that was, that was the church that a lot of, you know, a lot of people who, the, um, Sunday morning was for the Easter lilies that bloom once a year. It's like that Saturday night was, was the church where, um, <laughs> the regulars came to church for Easter Sunday. Might not be such a fashion show or whatever. I don't know, but I've never used that and I've never heard that before. And I never will use that because, you know, it's not, one thing, I don't think that those people, those Christmas and Easter Christians, they only come twice a year. I think they are rare used to be a very common practice, but now I think it might just be if the only ones who do that are people who are, um, who never go to church, but will go to church on Christmas and Easter with their families. I don't think people just go to church on Easter anymore. I think that there's just no societal pressure to do that anymore which I think is what caused a lot of it. Or maybe, you know, some of it was probably just, well, we're Christian and this is what we do on Easter and, and Christmas. And it's so sad because then they probably, if they only go on Christmas Eve and, and Easter Sunday, especially if you have me picking the hymns, Christmas Eve, you sing Joy to the World and Silent Night and maybe a different one. Hark the Herald Angels Sing is one I would always pick, but the, you know, I could always rotate that hymn, but you always begin with Joy to the World and end with Silent Night. And Easter Sunday, at least in the Methodist Church, um, Christ the Lord is risen today. And um, and um, up from the grave he arose. And then um, because he lives or something, those three, and you might come and only think that the church sings six songs a year. <laughs> but it's not that way at all. Anyway, I was also going to say yesterday was the first, I mean, I started this Mornings of Stanley video series one year ago yesterday. We would normally have been finished with this book had I not taken um, weeks off for vacation. So um, so that's why we're not finished when we still have a couple more weeks to go. I think, I think we're in week 50, so 50, 51, and 52. So... Um, We'll finish at the end of this month, and then I'll decide if I want to do another year of mornings with Stanley Jones and this dog and Lucy too. Um, have I thought about? I mean, he Jones wrote all these devotional books. Another one is a great, another great one. Well, there's two. The Word Became Flesh, talking about the importance of the incarnation, and there's no one. Um, in Christ, which talks about all the um, all the places in the epistles, mostly, where it talks about being in Christ, um, Christ in you, and you in Christ. And of course, there's also his first first. Um, I mean, he has so many to choose from. Um, his first one was. Um, I can't remember. It's abundant living or victorious living. I think it's abundant living, which, you know, is based on that phrase in, in Gospel of John. I came to give you life and to give it abundantly. And um, anyway, I don't know, or maybe I'll stop. <laughs> I know several people have said they enjoy this, so maybe I'll continue. So maybe I will. I enjoy it too. Gives me somebody other than the dogs to talk to, even though you don't talk back. Okay, Stanley is laying down on my feet. Lucy is laying down on Stanley's feet. Maybe I can read without Stanley jumping up, but I think he's, oh, he's like, why'd you stop? Why'd you stop petting me? Why'd you stop petting me? Um, 
I don't remember there's two verses oh here they are um we're still in first john i looked and we're not just going to continue with first john for a while even though that's what this book is based on um two verses from first john chapter 3 11 and 14 for this is a message you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another we know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. Here's our reading today. This is week... Oh, week 49. I said 50, but 49. Okay. Um, Tuesday of week 49. It feels like Monday to me because I didn't go to work yesterday. I hope I remember to go to Kiwanis tonight. Anyway, here is our reading, We Live When We Love. In his book, Love Against Hate, Carl Menninger says, the psycho psychologist speaking for science is like a voice crying in the wilderness. The disease of the world is a disease of the individual personality, he says. No one listens. The world war of today is a reflection of multiple miniature wars in the hearts of individuals. He persists. If the sickness of the world is a sickness of the individual, and if the sickness of the indi individual is a lack of love, then the sickness of the world is the lack of love. Therefore, out of sheer necessity, we are being driven to the feet of Christ to learn love. And love is not an elective course in the school of living. Take it or leave it and nothing happens. It is a must. Smiley Blanton, the psychiatrist, sums it up in the title of his book, Love or Perish. Alfred Adler, another psychiatrist, puts it this, this way. All the ills of personality can be traced back to the, to the fact that people do not understand the meaning of the phrase, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus made the statement 2,000 years ago in the science of the mind after experiment experimentation with this business of living comes along and says, if you don't understand that, you don't understand how to live. So if you approach life either through the way of Christ or through the way of science, you come out at one place, love. As someone puts it, only to the extent that we love, do we live. Or in other words, only to the extent that we are mature in love, are we mature. Mary, of whom I have written elsewhere, specializes in love. She says, it is the easiest thing that I do. No wonder the wife of an Episcopal, Episcopal clergyman said of her, the New Testament will never be finished as long as Mary is alive. For she is a perpetuation of the agape love of the New Testament, the real apostolic succession and the only succession that matters. Emil Bruner, the theologian, said, Find and join the church that has the most love in it, and that will be the truest church. I, I just love this whole idea, and that's I feel like this is I've actually I think I've learned from this, even though I don't live it as well as I wish I did. I do preach this, I think, more than anything, and. Um, I feel like sometimes I'm a one note preacher, maybe a two note, but still I don't preach a whole lot of different themes. But I think this this is such an important theme and it's not one that we get partially, but I don't think we get completely. Because and I know I and I'm preaching as much to myself as anyone, um, because love learning how to love as Christ, and wouldn't the all world problems be changed, be be eliminated if we all loved like Christ loved, if we all um, we're more giving and more out, 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 more focus, outwardly focused, um, looked at the needs of others and tried to meet the needs of others. And if, and everybody, if everybody did that and I mean, wouldn't world wars cease? Wouldn't we be interested in finding a way to to give water to everybody instead of trying to hoard water in certain parts of the world world or I mean how would the world be different? I mean if we were true I mean I just think of what the kingdom of God in heaven will be like. It will not be the way we think 
of our earthly kingdoms. There will be no walls, there will be no borders, there will be no language barriers, there will be only unity and people living together of all skin tones, of all colors, of all races, of all um, nationalities, all worshiping the same God. And um, and we are we're just not reflective of that. I think the church does a better job of being reflective of that in the world, but we're not we are not good at it as good as we should be at it. We are still very territorial. We're still very um, arrogant sometimes, especially us in the West, the places that are more um, affluent. Um, we tend to want to control more. That's a difficult thing to give up control, but that's what Christian maturity is. Here is our prayer for today. O oh, gracious Father, purify my loves from all self-seeking. Give me the agape love and only your agape love. Give me your agape love and only your agape love. For if I fall down here, I fall down. Nothing, absolutely nothing can atone for the lack of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Stanley, are you listening to me? <laughs> here is our affirmation of the day. Where love is, there is the truest church. And where love is... There is the truest Christian. Jesus is Lord.